So I've had quite a few people asking me what my favourite phones of 2021 are and am I going to do a best phones of the year roundup and usually it's something that I try and avoid because frankly I think it's f***ing pointless. Now the best phones of the year it all boils down to what you actually need out of a smartphone and what it inevitably ends up being in everyone's list is what is the most expensive smartphones in the year hence this year a lot of S21 Ultras, a lot of iPhone 13 Pro Maxes. So I thought all right then bollocks to it because I've got lots of requests in and everything maybe I will do a best phones of the year roundup but use it to focus on some of the phones that don't get all this love and adoration that the likes of the S21 Ultras do because you know not all of us have a hot ground wedged in our pans burning a hole there just ready to spend on the next smartphone. So we're going to lead with what I thought was the most fun smartphone of 2021 and this one definitely goes to the OnePlus Nord 2 Pac-Man edition. Now I'm a massive fan of the original OnePlus Nord 2 which came out earlier in 2021. It's one of the best mid-range smartphones, a strong rival to the likes of the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G and the Pixel 4a. And the Pac-Man edition sports the same great specs and features but also has that lovely Pac-Man retro gamer overlay so you've got a funkified design, you've got lots of bonus wallpapers and sound effects and music and all kinds of stuff squirreled away in there. Like it. You've even got a funky custom phone stand crafted out of Lego. I mean, what's not to love about this thing? And then the actual hardware itself, absolutely bloody fantastic. You've got the Dimensity 1200 AI chipset packed in there, so that can cope with anything you need, even a good bit of Genshin. Got a gorgeous 6.43 inch AMOLED display with the added bonus of a faster 90 hertz refresh rate, plus a stereo speaker setup and some serious audio smarts. The 4,500 milliamp capacity battery will keep you going all day long, even if you play plenty of Pac-Man, and it supports that Warp Charge 65 tech, so it powers back up in a jiffy. And that 50 megapixel primary camera sensor ain't quite as good as the Pixel 4 is, but it does do a good job of your everyday snaps. Now, one of the big things I look for when I review smartphones is value. So coming up with the best value smartphones of 2021 was quite a daunting task, but it eventually fell down to two of my favourites of the year, the Poco F3 and the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G. I couldn't really decide between them because they offer stunning value for money at that sort of mid-range £300 to £400 price point. If you're all about performance, definitely go for the Poco, which costs just over 300 quid these days and yet sports the Snapdragon 870 chipset, which offers impressive grunt for gaming. You can even run the mighty memory guzzling Genshin Impact on higher detail settings with next to no judders. And that's helped along by the fact you've got dedicated coolant tech in the Poco F3 as well, something that a lot of smartphones at this sort of price point do lack. The battery life has actually improved with age. You've got a gorgeous 6.67 inch OLED display with 120 hertz refresh, full HDR10 plus support on there as well. And you've got 5G on top of Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. And no, the Poco F3 isn't perfect. You don't get a headphone jack in there. You don't get any way of expanding the storage and the stereo speakers aren't particularly fantastic. But overall, I've got to say stunning value for money, especially now it's dropped in price. And have actually done an in-depth long-term Poco F3 review as well, so go check that out if you want to know more. My other pick for best value smartphone of 2021 is the Samsung Galaxy A52s 5G, which proves Sammy really can spunk out a great mid-ranger, as well as the super expensive S21 Ultras and what have you. The design is pretty straightforward, but you do get a selection of nice colours, including awesome mint, which I particularly enjoyed. And you've got full IP67 water and dust resistance here as well, which is quite rare to find at this price point. And like Google and OnePlus, Samsung also offers several years of OS and security updates as well, so at least you've got a good bit of future proof in there, nice and reassuring. Like the Poco, you've got a gorgeous 120Hz AMOLED display, pumping out gorgeous sharp Full HD plus visuals. And unlike that Poco F3, the Galaxy A52 S 5G also offers a headphone jack as well as expandable storage, so it really is pretty much a fantastic all-round smartphone. The Snapdragon 778G chipset ain't as powerful as the 870 stuffed inside of the Poco F3, but it can still handle pretty demanding games like Genshin Impact. And you once again have a 4,500 milliamp capacity battery stuffed in there as well, although the Galaxy A52 S 5G does charge up a lot more the lethargically, that's a tricky word, uh, compared with the Poco F3. And yeah, the feature-packed camera is respectable, if not great. It does struggle with moving subjects and tougher lighter conditions, and the video results aren't particularly great. 
But seriously, those complaints aside, it is a fantastic everyday handset. I would happily rock it in my pocket every day. And yeah, that's a good rhyme. And dinner year fear if your budget can't quite stretch up to the Poco F3 or that Galaxy A52 S 5G, because in 2021, an absolute shag load of budget friendly handsets were launched and some of them were really bloody good too. Like so the Poco X3 Pro offers a similar kind of everyday experience to the Poco F3, if not quite strong on the performance, but still very solid for around 200 pounds. The likes of Xiaomi and Motorola and Realme all launched fantastic options around that price point as well, but I have rounded up the best budget phones around 300 pounds and 200 pounds. So if you are on a very stringent budget, then definitely go check out those videos. As for the best camera phone of 2021, well, hands down for me, it is the Google Pixel 6 smartphones. There were some very strong alternatives launched in 2021. The likes of the S21 is very good, especially hot for video. And the iPhones are decent as well. But in terms of versatility, nothing can match those Pixel 6 handsets. You can depend on them at any time of day, no matter what you're trying to shoot. It doesn't matter if you're trying to snap a hyperactive child or a crazy cat, they will come out looking perfectly natural in any kinds of conditions. And it's really good to see those natural colors, those natural hues and tones really coming through, even in very low light environments as well, now that Google has really matched the fantastic image processing with some really, really top end hardware. And if you do have extra cash to spunk on the Pro model as well, well, you've got the benefit of that telephoto lens as well to get closer to the action. My only complaint with the Pixel smartphones is that the selfie cam isn't as good as quite a lot of rivals. This didn't do nearly as good a job as the rear cams for capturing natural skin tones, especially in more ambient environments. It was definitely a bit of a letdown in low light. And if you're more of a whole movie buff, you like shooting lots of video rather than stills, then maybe look at those iPhone 13 handsets and the Samsung Galaxy S21s as well, because they tend to be a bit stronger on the video capture side. And now a subject close to my heart indeed, the best compact smartphone of 2021. And unfortunately, these things are a very rare breed indeed. I mean, basically it would have been the Zen phone except for the crap battery life, which means that the iPhone 13 mini pretty much wins it by default. The iPhone 13 mini is my favorite of the new family by far because it's so pleasingly dinky, you can easily use it one handed and yet it sports most of the premium specs of its considerably more expensive siblings. That 5.4 inch OLED display is an absolute stunner. It's just a shame about the ridiculous notch. That A15 chipset is proper powerful, so you can play absolutely whatever you want on this thing all day long. The battery life is absolutely stunning as well, despite the fact it's super dinky. As for the camera tech, well, that 12 megapixel primary sensor does a great job of capturing everyday shots of the fam, even if it's not quite as dependable as the Pixel 6 when the conditions aren't perfect. And yeah, you've got the usual iPhone complaints, the lack of a fingerprint sensor, the fact that iOS is still quite restrictive in areas. But overall, I liked it a lot more than that ridiculously brick-like Pro Max model, and at least it's not quite as hideously expensive. Now, my next award is the appropriately titled, Ooh, la -dee da look at you, Mr. Smartphone award. And this is for any smartphone that has that little bit of extra pizzazz or jazzy funkiness uh, to try and get you to buy it, even though it's probably cost, you know, a thousand pounds plus. And this award definitely would have easily gone to Oppo's rollable phone if it was actually available to buy. I just love the way it expands in your hand. Fanar, fanar. Sadly, that's more of a concept smartphone, so definitely not available to buy. But I do really, really like Oppo's Find N. I've been playing with it for a good few days now and really, really enjoy that compact form factor when it's folded up. And then just the incredible, practically creaseless main display is absolutely fantastic as well. So that definitely gets a big thumbs up. This award definitely has to be shared with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and that lovably pointless second display around back. Not really sure what it's doing there, but it is a lot of fun. And also Samsung's Galaxy S21 Ultra with its 100 times space zoom. What exactly are you shooting with that thing and why do you have to stand so far away from it? Is it because it's something you shouldn't be shooting a photo of? In which case, just don't. And last up is my award for my own personal favorite smartphone of 2021. This is the one I've most enjoyed reviewing and the one that I would most want to use as my full time, what was it, daily driver or whatever, if I actually got the chance to do that because I wasn't reviewing a different smartphone every week. And my pick for this year is the Google Pixel 6. That's the regular one, not the Pro model, because I prefer the slightly more compact form factor and the fact that it is cheaper as well. Didn't get quite enough mileage out of the upgrades for the Pro model to really justify that extra cost. Yes, the performance might not be quite as good as some rivals, but you can still get gaming on it as long as you're not trying to push Genshin up to the max detail settings and blaze through it for a good couple of hours or so. 
the battery life is sublime on here despite what some other YouTubers would have you believe you. Do whatever you want on this thing all day long, lots of camera play, lots of screen on time and you'll still have gas in the tank at the end of it. The media chops are really strong despite the lack of a headphone jack, that is one of my few bugbears with this handset. And of course that camera tech is just, it's just bloody great. What more can I say? So overall, top marks to Google for the Pixel 6. It is a, a big step up from the Pixel 5. I'm looking forward to what else we managed to get out of that Tensor chipset going forward as well. And it's also great to see features like the screen caller now finally arriving on here as well. And that works perfectly. So anywho, that's my pick of my personal best smartphones of 2021 uh, with a bit of love for some of those phones that often get overlooked by other YouTubers. What are your own personal favourite smartphones for this year? What have you been rocking and have you really enjoyed it? And what would you replace my own personal picks with as well in each of these categories? Be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do book subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Stay tuned for my video on the best coming smartphones, which should be launching uh, in 2022. Uh, that should hopefully be dropping in a couple of days. And have yourselves a bloody fantastic rest of the holidays and all the best for the new year. Cheers everyone. Love you.